Okay, in this video I want to begin talking about the 3D structure of proteins. So I thought I'd start with the alpha helix and um, a brief discussion about it because that's, this is how I was kind of introduced to the 3D structure. This is one of the first things I started looking at. So I have a little bit of information about the alpha helix here and it says the alpha helix is the most regular secondary structure of proteins. It is a right-handed helix in which every backbone NH group forms a hydrogen bond with the backbone carbonyl group of the amino acid four residues earlier. The hydrogen bonding is repeated in the I in the I plus four I arrangement. So let's take a look. I got I took a couple of pictures here of the alpha helix. Um, and basically what what a right handed helix is, or the way to think about a right handed helix is you just put your hand here and to curl and the direction that your fingers curl in is the direction that the helix winds in. So if you have your hand like this, the helix turns in that direction. I just want to kind of throw that out there um, as a little tidbit about the alpha helix. So in looking at this picture here, we can see that these kind of orange lines here, these represent um, hydrogen bonds. And if you look at it, say starting from the bottom here, say this is our first residue right here now this hydrogen this hydrogen bond should be formed with the fourth residue so we'll say okay one residue two residues three residues four residues and sure enough on the fourth residue if you look at this close enough I'm sure you'll be able to convince yourself of this but on the fourth residue there's a hydrogen bond here and that's between the backbone atoms. It's important to understand that these, these hydrogen bonds that form in this alpha helix are between the backbone atoms, between the NH group and the carbonyl group. So that's a little bit of information about the alpha helix and a couple pictures. I mean, you know, just look at them, find yourself a picture, check it out, look at the hydrogen bonding, look at the structure, and, you know, convince yourself of these things. Now I want to actually look at a couple of problems, some information about alpha helixes and kind of work our way through understanding them a little bit better. So it says, use your book to identify the number of amino acids per 360 degree turn of an alpha helix. Given this information, how many degrees of separation would you expect between each amino acid in an alpha helix? So basically what they're asking us to do here is say what the pitch is, how many residues per turn, and the separation of the residues along the helix. So I'm going to start with the pitch, and the pitch. This is just the pitch is just 5.4 angstroms. So it's 5.4 angstroms. Now you might say to me, well, what the, what is this? What is an angstrom? So I'll say one angstrom is equal to one times 10 to the negative 10th meters. So the pitch is 5.4. And you might ask, well, what the hell does the pitch tell us about the alpha helix? And I'm going to tell you what it, what it is. Basically, what it says is the structure repeats itself every 5.4 angstroms along the helix axis. So we have repeating structure every 5.4 angstroms. That's important. Now, the residues per turn, so you want to know how many residues does it take to make one full turn around the helix. And that answer is 3.6. So it's 3.6 amino acid residues per turn. And an example of that is if the helix has, say, 36 amino acids. So if the helix has 36 amino acids, or if it's 36 amino acids long, there would be 10 turns. So if it's 36 amino acids, this would equal 10 turns. So that would equal 10 turns. Now, in order to find the separation between each amino acid, what you want to do is you want to take the pitch, which is 5.4 angstroms, and you want to divide that by the number of residues per turn, which is 3.6. And when you do this, what you'll find is that there's 1.5 angstroms. So 1.5 angstroms of separation per turn, or per or separation between residues, rather. 
So there's 1.5 angstroms separation between atoms. So that's that answers this. This is just information you could probably get from the book or something like that. The idea is just to kind of lead you through, to lead you through the problem and get you get you to see a little bit about the alpha helix before you start trying to do the actual problems. So what I want to move on to here now is the actual problem solving portion. And it says consider the following peptide. Identify the hydrophobic residues by boxing them and the hydrophilic residues by circling them. So in case you don't remember what the hydrophobic residues are, I'm just going to give them to you right here. They're alanine, ALA, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline, methionine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. So those are the, I should say what these are, these are the hydrophobic amino acids. So those are the hydrophobic amino acids. Now what the problem asks us to do is put a, let's see, box around the hydro, a box around the hydrophobics and a circle around the hydrophilics. Okay, well that's easy enough because what we'll say here is, okay, leucine, well that's one of our hydrophobics, that gets a box. GLU, that's a hydrophilic, so that's going to get a circle. And that's going to get a circle here. Valine, that's a hydrophobic. Phenylalanine, that's a hydrophobic. Serine, hydrophilic. That's hydrophilic. Leucine, that also is hydrophobic. Cysteine is not up here as you can see, so it's hydrophilic. Theranine, hydrophilic. Histidine, again hydrophilic. And valine, hydrophobic. Theranine, leucine, and lysine. So that's what they want you to do. They want you to put a box around the ones that are hydrophobic and a circle around the ones that are hydrophilic. So that's what we did. Now, the next part of the question here says, the sequence forms an alpha helix. So they're telling us this is an alpha helix. It says, plot each residue on the helical wheel, including the circles and, including the circles and boxes. You are looking down the main helical axis. So just letting you know that you're basically have an overhead view of the helix. So what I did was I made up this little helical wheel here. I'm hoping to get it all on camera at the same time, including the residues, obviously. You have to excuse my artistry here. And I put the first leucine residue right here. So that's already on here at zero degrees. Now, you might be asking, well, how do I know where to put the next residue? Well, we're going to go in a clockwise direction here, and we're going to put a residue every 100 degrees. So, I'll just say that every 100 degrees, you place a residue. So every 100 degrees, you want to place a residue. So I'm going to do that, and, and it's really quite simple. So I'm going to. So if you look here, this is zero degrees. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. So that's 90, and this is 100 right here. So that's where I'm going to put my G L U. I'm going to put a circle around it, like they indicated. So again, we're going to go 100. So 10, 20. So right here is where we're going to find our next residue, and that's going to be so here's our next residue, and that's valine, V-A-L, and that's hydrophobic, so it gets a square. So again, here we go, phenylalanine, P-H-E. That gets a square. So 
so this is a hundred this is a serine so we can mark these off maybe as we're going so we can remind ourselves what we're doing so right here we'll go GLN we'll mark that off So we'll make our leucine, L-E-U, cross that off, and we got cysteine up here, so, C-Y-S, that's got a circle around it, and this has theranine. You'll have to excuse me, it's taking me a while to make sure I'm putting these all in the correct places. I want to do it right for you guys here. So, we have histidine here. I can get my pen to work. H-I-S. And that's going to work right there. So, 10, 20. We're right here. Valine. And we're almost done. So we're almost done here. We're getting to the last couple of residues. We're just going to do leucine and lysine. L-E-U. Put a square around it. And lysine. Okay. So that's it. That's pretty much what you needed to do. You needed to basically put these residues on here, keep the circles and the squares, and um, just plug them in each 100 residues apart. It's kind of a, it's kind of a simple process, as you can tell, though a bit tedious even for me to count them all out, make sure I'm putting them all in the proper places. Now, what you can do with this is you can kind of see that this is a um, this has both polar and nonpolar residues on it. So that's called amphoteric and what we should be able to do here is put a line through kind of indicating where this where these residues So I would say it would be something like this cutting them off because remember, this is both polar and nonpolar. So you can have a hydrophobic surface that's going to, you know, in, that's going. This is going to be a hydrophobic surface of the helix, which is going to interact with other hydrophobic groups. Then you're going to have this hydrophilic face over here, that's going to interact with other hydrophilic thing um, surfaces. So basically, that's all you have to do to uh, draw one of these helical wheels and put the residues around. Remember, that it's 100 degrees apart you just need to identify which ones are hydrophobic which ones are hydrophilic and just remember your hydrophobic amino acids and uh, that's about it for this video so thanks